Hello, in this lecture we will learn about some fundamental concepts of Java. We will cover primitive data types, variables, operators, strings, arrays, loops and basic input and output. Primitive data types in Java. Though Java is a object oriented language, it also provides some primitive data types. Basic types such as int, short, long, byte, which you may have already used in a C or C program, are also available in Java. You need not to create an object of these types, they are available to you by the Java programming language. In Java, an integer is of 32 bit, a short 16, a long 64, and a byte 8 bits. Irrespective of the platform, the length remains the same. This is very different than a C++ where the length depends on the hardware platform that you are using. This makes Java program easier to run on different types of hardware and you know what type of behavior you will expect from a Java program. Similarly, a floating point is of size 32 and a double is of size 64. I have given the range of floating point and the double here and I ask you to find out the range of int, short, long and byte yourself. A float has a suffix f and we can also use big decimal for high precision in Java. The Java character type is similar to the character type of C or C++. It uses a single quote and uses unicode values. The Java character is the code unit of UTF-16. Java boolean has two values false and true. In Java an expression must evaluate to true or false. This is different than C or C++ where a zero or non-zero value works. For example, if you are using an if loop in Java, the expression must be a boolean expression, just a zero will not work. Java is a strongly typed language, which means that each variable must have a type and each variable name must start with a letter. After the initial letter, it may include letter or other digits. All variables must also be initialized before use. Java automatically initializes these variables for you. However, my advice is to initialize them yourself, so that you know what values these variables hold. You may define a variable as a final. That means that the value of that variable then cannot be changed and it acts like a constant. As told earlier, for such variables we use all capital letters. Here is a simple example of a variable called retirement age which is set to 65 and is declared as a final. Just like C or C++, Java gives you all the basic operators plus, minus, multiplication, division, etcetera and other increment and decrement operators, other relational, boolean and ternary operators just like C or C++. I am assuming that you have already programmed in C or C++, so I am not going into the details of how these operators work. Java also provides you bitwise operators which you can use if you want to work directly with the bits. Java library also provides you access to different mathematical functions. For example, a square root, power of, sine, cos, exponential, log functions and many others. Please use Java documentation to know about what mathematical functions are available from Java. Java allows you conversion from one numeric type to another. As you may see that if you are converting from a smaller numeric type to another, bigger numeric type then you may not lose information, but if you are doing the other way round that you may lose information. Precedence and associativity, you may have learned about that in your other programming language like C or C++ as well. You may either choose to remember all the rules about precedence or associativity, however the recommended use is to use the parenthesis. Parenthesis remove the doubt and make your code more readable. For example, if you are using a plus equal to b plus equal to c, using the precedence and associativity, it will be calculated as 
first b plus equal to c and then a plus equal to the expression that has been calculated. The best way is to use the parenthesis, so that it is clear to the programmer what do you mean without having to go into the details of precedence and associativity. Java also gives you enumerated types, which means that you can declare your own restricted values. Suppose you own the pizza hut and that is why you would like to describe the size as a small, medium or large. Enum type allows you that possibility. So, you can declare your own data type such as a size which has three values of a small, medium and large. Then you can refer to them using the dot operator. You can use them as like any other types. For example, you may have an if else block which has s comparing it to the size medium or comparing it to other sizes that you have described. Strings. Java has a class in Java library called a string that allows you different string functionalities that you may need for your programs. A string is initialized with double quotes. As you can see in the example, I am having a variable called message of the type string which is initialized to the value of hello world. I can concatenate different strings using the plus. I can also get substring using a method called substring. Please note that the first position is inclusive, but the second position is not inclusive. Also in, a, in Java, a strings start counting from 0. So, if I give 1 to 5, I actually mean the second letter and not the first letter. In the given example of 1 to 5, I will actually have E, L, L and O as a result of the message dot substring call. If you want to compare two strings, the advisable method is to use equals and equals ignore case. Equals method compares the value held by a string variable. Strings are immutable in Java. That is once you have created a string, you cannot change it and JVM keeps that string variable in the memory as long as your program lives. If you want to create mutable strings, please use a string builder as your base class and not the Java. For checking for equality, do not use double equal to sign. Double equal to sign may introduce intermittent bugs which you may not know. Later on, we will see a program which will show you comparison of strings using double equal to sign and using equals method to demonstrate you how the double equals and the equals method work. Whenever you want to check for equality of two strings, always use equals or equals ignore case. Do not ever use double equal to sign. There are different methods which, all, which Java provides you. For example, length returns you the length of the string. You can also access individual character by using character at. Suppose you are reading from individual characters from a keyboard and you want to create a string. In this case, you may use a concatenation. However, as you know that Java strings are immutable, the longer you use concatenate, Java will create those many different strings into the virtual memory. This is not very efficient. For such cases, you should ideally use a string builder, which provides an append and edit functions over the string. Here are some methods which are provided by string builder class. You may want to write a program using a string and a string builder and check these different functionalities by yourself. Input and output. Java provides us different ways of taking input and also different ways to print output. In this lecture, we will only discuss the basic input methods that you may immediately need. One such method is to use an object of the type scanner. A scanner is defined under java.util.scanner class. In order to use a scanner, you will have to do an import of java.util.scanner class. A scanner can be used as shown here by declaring a variable of type scanner. You can initialize it. After that, you can use different methods that are available to you, such as next line, next int, or simply next. 
You can also use methods such as hash next to find out if there is anything left to, to scan. Output just like C or C++ Java allows you multiple ways to format your output. Here are some simple examples given. For example, you may want to print an output of the type where you display only two decimal values. Java provides many other output opportunities and I advise you to refer to Java documentation to know about different output functionalities that are provided by Java. Java also allows you to read files which are available on your file system and also to write to the files which are available on your file system. You may want to even create new files from a Java program. You may use the same scanner to read from a file except that this time you will have to initialize the scanner with the file that is present on your, on your file system. Similarly, for writing to a file you may use print writer which is another Java class that is available to you. Now, let us come to conditional statement. I have already used if and else in the beginning of this lecture and you may be familiar with if and else by your prior experience with C or C++ or other programming languages. If and else provides you the basic conditional statement. Essentially, if evaluates a Boolean expression and if that expression is true, then the commands next to the if block are executed. If those are not true, then the else block is executed. You may use if and else together or you may only use if. In Java, as I stated earlier, the expression must be a boolean and a 0 or non-zero simply does not work as they would work in a C or C++ program. Here is a simple example of using multiple if and else statement or called nested if and else blocks. For example, you can see I start with an f and then I go else if, else if, else if and finally, I end with an else. You may want to write similar programs for checking for multiple conditions. An alternative to use nested if and else is using a switch statement. Switch is same as nested if and else. However, the condition can only be an integer or enumerated constant. The syntax of switch is switch given expression and then you can have multiple cases to execute depending on the expression that it evaluates to. At the end, it is mandatory to write break. If you do not write break, then switch simply falls through. There is also a default statement which executes if none of the cases are true. You may choose to use nested if else or switch as per your convenience. Let us now come to loops. Just like C or C++, Java allows you both indeterminate loop and determinate loop. Indeterminate loop is the one in which you do not know how many times a loop will execute. Example of such loop structures are while and do while loops. Let us see a simple program on the right side. As you can see that in the first loop, I am using a while statement and I am checking that as long as i is a smaller than 5, the loop will keep getting executed. Now, this loop may execute 5 times, 1 time, 0th time or even infinite number of times. In the second case, I am using a do while loop which is also checking for the same condition. An essential difference between while and do while is that the do while loop execute at least once. For example, no matter what the value of i is, the do while loop will definitely execute once. However, if I am just using the while loop and the condition does not satisfy in the very beginning, then the while loop does not execute. The determinate loop example is the for loop. In for loop, we know how many times the loop is going to execute. So, for example, in this given for loop, I know that this loop will execute for the value of i starting from 0 till the value of i reaches 10 and I keep on incrementing the value of i for each loop iteration. For loop is very useful when we know 
how many times a loop will execute. You may have already used for and do while and while loop in your C or C++ programs. With for and while loops, we also sometimes use statements such as break or continue or label to break the control flow. Break takes you out of a loop, continue transfers the control to the header of the innermost loop and labels allows you a block of code to be labeled which you can jump into. Traditionally use of break, continue and label is discouraged and you are supposed to use a control flow that is clear to the programmer. As you may already know, arrays are data structure to store collection of values of the same type. For example, if you want to store age of all the students in your class. In such cases, you may want to use an array of type integer to store ages of all the students in single data structure. The syntax for array is as shown here in the example. Here in the given example, I am declaring an array of type int and of size 100. Then I am initializing that array to a given value. The limitation with the array is that after creation, the size of the array is fixed. However, the advantage of array is that individual elements can be changed very easily using the index of the array. A very good way to initialize an array is using a for each loop. For each loop was introduced in a language called C sharp. You may already be aware of it. Unlike the for loop, for each loop has a very compact syntax. For example, here is a for each loop which will go through an array variable named a. The array a is an integer array. I am using a reference variable i and I am printing out all the values of the array elements. The for each loop here goes through all the elements of the array a and I can access those elements using the variable i. For each loop is very useful if you want to process all the elements of array. It provides you a very compact syntax. Arrays can also be initialized directly at the time of creation. For example, in this case, I am initializing an array to the value 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. In this case, I need not to even define the size of an array. The initialization block itself defines the size. So, this number array, the size is 6 and it is already initialized to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I also need not to call new here. Such initialization is very useful when you have array of a smaller size and when you already know the value that you need to initialize each element with. If you want to copy an array, you can use a uh, simple equal to sign. However, this will only copy the reference which means that now the two variables will refer to the same array and the change in the array will be reflected by the both variables. If you really want to copy all the elements of an array, please use the method called copy off. This copies all the array elements. Java also provides you common array operations. Sometimes you may want to sort all the array elements. Java provides you a method called sort, which uses the quick sort algorithm. Similarly, Java, you, in Java, similarly in Java, you can print all the array elements by using two string method. You can also do search within the array elements by using a method called binary search, which uses the binary search algorithm to search for an array. And if the element is found, then the index of that array element is returned or if the element is not found, then minus 1 is returned. Similarly, Java provides methods for equality. There are many more Java methods which are available for you for array operations. I advise you to refer to Java documentation to learn about array operations. Besides one dimensional array, you may also declare multi dimensional arrays in Java. Multi dimensional arrays work as rows and columns. For example, if I want to declare a two dimensional array 
I may want to declare it as rows and columns. If I want to declare a three dimensional array, I will have to add another element here and so on. For each does not work directly for multi dimensional array. Here I am giving a simple code example to initialize or to access multi dimensional arrays. You first go through a row and then inside each row you may use a for each loop. So, each dimension of an array acts like an independent array if you want to understand it from a for each loop point of view. This is all about arrays in Java. I advise you to write simple programs in Java which uses array and revise your concept of arrays. Java library provides you various methods to, with which directly work on array. This is unlike C or C++ where you may have to write many of these methods yourself. Thank you. In the next lecture, we will discuss about objects and classes.